Ja, hej och välkomna till Qualcomm. Vi sitter här i ett av deras trevliga intervjurum här och tänkte prata lite om deras nya Snapdragon S4-plattform, eh, Create-arkitekturen. Och med mig här så har vi Michelle Leiden Lee som ska prata lite om, om plattformen, vad som kommer skall och eh, vad den eh, kan göra för någonting som vi inte ser idag. Så, so, please, give us a bit of uh, information about the new Snapdragon S4 platform. Sure. So um, our Snapdragon S4 platform, our processors, are the latest generation of our Snapdragon processors. We're very excited about this generation. There are a few things that we've done that are brand new, actually, and I think you mentioned we have the new Crate microarchitecture, the CPU microarchitecture. Um, the first product out will be a dual core, and then we'll have a quad core later in the year. So uh, that's very exciting. Um, as I said, it's a brand new architecture, really designed to scale for the performance needs that we see, especially in high-end smartphones, tablets, and and eventually into Windows 8 devices. Um, and then we also have a new GPU, uh, GPU architecture as well. It's our Adreno architecture. In the first version, we'll have Adreno 225, and then we'll follow that up later with Adreno 320. Really, the purpose there is to get very high-end graphics for the types of user experiences people really want, especially in gaming uh, and in uh, interfaces. Uh, we also have built into this platform a fully integrated 3G, 4G LTE multi-mode, so um, for great connectivity. This is also the first time that we fully integrated Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and FM as well into the, the device. Of course, we've always had our GPS functionality, um, but recently we actually added GLONASS to that, where we have a, a separate set of satellites that in addition to the first round of satellites, so you can get much better location aware and uh, location-based services. So it's really quite a high-performance platform. And then uh, in addition to, obviously, the GPU, we have advanced audio and video capability as well. So um, in other words, we could go out from a tablet to a big screen TV over HDMI and get full 1080p. Uh, we've also built in some audio, um, advanced audio capabilities, including Dolby 5.1 and 7.1 surround sound, SRS. So um, there's a lot packed into a very little chip. <laughs> exactly, and everything is in one chip, right? So you've incorporated all the different logics in one. That's right, that's right. It's one single chip um, with everything incorporated into that chip. It's about a 14 by 14 mil square um, chip. So very, very small, incredibly power efficient. One of the reasons that we actually build all of our own architectures, the CPU, the GPU, the modem, is because each set of technologies we really optimize for the best performance and the lowest possible power. Because once you get into this kind of a thermal envelope where you have glass and metal, you really can't have a heat sink, you can't have a fan, it's very difficult to ambient cool this kind of device. So you really want to make sure you're as power efficient as possible so that your thermal envelope is kept in check and also really what users care about is battery life because the last thing you want to do is in the middle of the day have to stop and plug in your smartphone or plug in your tablet. You really want to get the best battery life possible. And so we do what we can at the chip level to make sure that we're the most power efficient chip we can be. So Michelle, this is actually a prototype uh, platform, right, if I understand correctly? Yes, this is actually what we call our mobile development platform. Yeah. Because what we wanted to do is have a hardware platform that we could give to developers so that they could develop their applications so that once the commercial devices became available, applications would be re readily available at the same time. So this particular one is a tablet form factor. We also have a phone form factor of these as well. And developers can take these and actually start to develop their applications prior to commercial availability. This one is our latest one with our S4, first S4 processor inside. Is, is this, sorry, is this a dual core version? Of this is. This is a dual core version. This is our MSM 8960. Yeah. So it does have a dual core crate CPU. It has an Adreno um, GPU, 225 GPU. Um, it has the um, 3G, 4G LTE world mode modem. It has Wi-Fi integrated. Um, it has all the audio and video, advanced audio and video capabilities that we talked about. So this about. is fully featured. This is fully featured, yeah. fully optimized. And clock frequencies, what are we talking about here? Uh, this particular one, I believe, is at 1.5 gigahertz okay, okay. for a CPU core. Yeah. Do you have any uh, ideas or uh, do you know what your partners will, uh, what uh, frequencies they're aiming for in the first uh, devices? Well, I can't really talk about devices that aren't commercial yet. Okay. So um, the devices are coming pretty soon then? Very soon. Yeah. As we said, we, we had one, um, one OEM announced here at CES. We expect to see more devices over the next few months. Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. And we see a lot of uh, 
tablet uh, prototypes here on the show floor. Is that a uh, on purpose, or is it just it's an easier form factor to show off? Or are you focusing more on tablets or smartphones, or is it? We're we're really both? focused on both. Actually, down on the floor, we do have some of our our phone form factors as well. But the reason we have you see a lot of the tablet form factors, especially in our gaming room, is because what's very neat we see happening right now is this screen three screen effect, where if you have a mobile game, for example, on your on your smartphone or your tablet and then you walk into your home, wouldn't it be nice if you could immediately transfer that, that experience to the big screen TV? And now you can use your tablet actually as your game controller. And uh, actually we're very excited here at CES because one of the things that we announced is a new addition to the Snapdragon S4 processor family, our MPQ8064, which will be a quad core crate um, with Adreno 320 graphics and advanced audio and video capability for televisions. So we see these processors going into what, what the industry calls smart TVs. They could go into a digital media adapter or a set-top box as well. And now you have the ability um, with your mobile phone, your tablet, and your TV to actually have all of your experiences, the things that you love about mobile, all your applications, all your mobile games, everything. When you walk into your home, now you can see those all on your big screen TV as well. Sounds good. Uh, well, we're looking here at uh, this prototype. We can see that it's uh, running Android and uh, it's a gingerbread, if I'm not uh, mistaken. I believe this one is gingerbread, yeah. yes. We can double check that. Uh, how are you working with, for example, Google and Microsoft to improve uh, the code for their current and also upcoming operating systems for the Crate platform? We work very, very closely, as you know, with, with Google and with Microsoft. Yeah. We, we actually support more high level S's, uh, you know, the most high level high level S's of anyone, um, we, uh, we really listen to our customers. Yeah. So whatever our customers want to do, um, we really we try to support that, and that, that's across the board, but in particular for the high level OS. So for example, the Lenovo TV that you see downstairs um, that has Snapdragon, um, based on Snapdragon, is actually ice cream sandwich, so it's Android uh, uh, exactly, 4.0. Exactly, yeah, so I was going, uh, coming to that. Uh, the ice cream sandwich is, of course, already out in some devices, and it's rolling out more every week, more mm -hmm. or less. Uh, I guess that most of the crate uh, um, devices on Android will be running ice cream sandwich. Uh, and again, we listen to our customers, so whatever our customers want, yeah. we deliver. So as, as you know, we support really all the flavors of, of Android. Um, whatever our customers want and they want to deliver to the market, we will support. Exactly. Great. The performance uh, we hear is uh, much improved from the S3 generation and mm -hmm. the Scorpion. Uh, if we compare battery life, uh, I know you're going to the new uh, manufacturing process now as well. We did. Are we going to see big differences in battery life? Or we do. We expect to see a, a, a significant difference in power efficiency yeah. from generation to generation. As you know, there's a lot on the device itself that actually affects the battery life exactly. other than the processor. Yeah. There's the display, there's you know the software load, all of that affects really the overall battery life of the device. So we do everything that we can at the processor level and at the system level, especially working on the software, um, the, the high level OS to be as power efficient as possible. And what we've seen going from our Snapdragon S3 to our Snapdragon S4 is we get quite a nice improvement, even even though S3 is incredibly power efficient, we get even more power efficient with our S4. Yeah, cool. Uh, we hear a lot of uh, manufacturers who's a bit afraid of uh, the LTE modems at the moment because they're separate uh, logic and it draws a lot of power. How are you uh, seeing the development with Snapdragon S4 when you have incorporated this uh, function into the ship itself? Yes. Is it a big difference from the current? Uh yes. I mean, that's it, one of the reasons that um, we inherently have our integration philosophy is, is that exact reason. When we're able to integrate everything, as you just said, we've gone to 28 nanometer process now. When we're able to integrate everything on one, uh, in one die, uh, we can optimize not only at the individual technology levels for p performance and power, but we can optimize at the total system level, at the chip system level for power and, and, and performance as well. Once we integrate LTE, then we see really a significant difference. And that's really one of the reasons, and it's, it's not just LTE, it's all the technologies integrated on one system on chip. That's really one of the key reasons that we really believe in, in, in integration.